February is synonymous with Valentine's Day, and for a lot of folks, that means chocolate. As this new month begins, we are talking sweets. Jason Padalinghung is a professor of economics and finance at Southern Connecticut State University. Jason's going to talk to us about the advertising and history of chocolate. Now, Jason, a lot of us know we love chocolate, and a lot of us might know that we like dark over semi-sweet, over white, but we really don't know a lot about the history of chocolate. Yes, well, thank you for having me. Uh, chocolate uh, was came from the Mexico, actually. It was uh, came from the cacao plant, and it was uh, considered a sacred drink by the Mexicans. And when the Spaniards arrived in the uh, 15th century, uh, they discovered uh, that chocolate was a, a addictive uh, good. And it actually, it was drank originally. It was originally a drink. And in the 19th century, uh, Cadbury was one of the pioneers who started making. Uh, the milk chocolate that we know today, the solid uh, milk chocolate that we know today. And obviously it has certainly evolved over the many years. And we see it a lot almost everywhere we go. Advertising for chocolate is all over. Yes. And what have you learned about that? Because you've done this study on history and advertising for about seven years now. Yes. Uh, well, my findings uh, show that both uh, the in-store displays, the things that we see in the store when we buy chocolate, let's say the the M&M &M mascot mm -hmm. or whatnot, uh, and also TV ads, they both have a positive impact on, on chocolate sales. Uh, my study has shown that both of them have a positive impact, but the in-store displays, the things that we see, have a bigger impact than the TV ads uh, do on, on the sales of chocolate. And how are you seeing the trends in advertising for chocolate change over the years? Because now it seems that there is a health element yeah. to chocolate, right? Yes. We uh, should be having chocolate. Exactly. It's good for us, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, originally, when they started advertising chocolate in the early 20th century, they, they advocated for the health benefits, even though there wasn't really a lot of health benefits. But nowadays, because uh, of the health benefits of dark chocolate, uh, uh, chocolate, the chocolate industry started to uh, advocate again or advertise their uh, health, uh, pos uh, the po possible health benefits, especially for dark chocolate. But there's also that element where they're also advertising chocolate as a, a sweet treat, uh, as an indulgence, sort of like you have a cheat day, you cheat on right. uh, uh, on your diet with having some chocolate and, and you let loose. So th there's sort of like those two contradictory trends in advertising chocolate. Now the history of the big chocolate companies like Mars and Hershey's isn't something that people typically think about when they see it in the store and buy it, but it certainly is interesting and significant, right? Yes, it is. Uh, well, the two big chocolate manufacturers in the U.S. are Hershey and Mars, and both of them started out around the late 19th century, early 20th century. And Hershey has an interesting history in, in because of the fact that it's a nonprofit foundation which is running the corporation. And when Milton Hershey, the founder, died, he left in his will that the corporation must fund the Hershey School, which is this boarding school for underprivileged mm. children. So it is a unique corporate setup. It's common in Europe. A lot of the big European companies that we know here, like IKEA or Aldi, do have that type of uh, nonprofit foundation run corporation type of setup. But it's, it is uncommon here in the US, and Hershey has that unique setup. While Mars is more of a family owned firm, tightly held family owned firm, and it's only recently that uh, non family managers have started to run the firm. So it's been run. run for almost a, more than 100 years, has been run as a family firm, and only recently you see um, outsiders come in and run the firm for them. Now, I have to ask you, you've done this study for about seven years now. How much uh, taste testing research have you done over those years? Uh, I've, done, I've done a little. Really difficult, that part, right? I know. I've done a little, and obviously it's the best part, I guess, of the, of the research was doing sure. a little bit of the testing, um, even though it, it, it's obviously not pertinent to, I guess, the findings, but it's, it's nice. And Certainly good to be familiar with the different kinds of chocolate. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Jason, thank you so much. For thank the you. Thank you for stuff. having me.